All right, so let's get that taken care of first. McCleary has to roll a seven or less. He's a negative one leader. He got a five. He is valorous. Let me get my little yes. medal out. Woo. General, <laughs> go get my box of medals. I'm going to decorate every man in this penetration, whoever they are. <laughs> the true funniest character in Kelly's Heroes, who is not oddball. Okay, um, this guy has to roll a three or less on 2d6, which isn't great. But. Yeah. Uh, he got a five. No. Uh, the next guy, same thing, three or less. An eleven. Yeah, okay, the next guy gets a little bit better. He needs a five or less. Okay. A four. Ooh, cool. The Vickers crew is now valorous. That's <laughs> not good. That's not good. <laughs> Should be useful. <laughs> no, it's going to be useful, all right. Oh, my God. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to get slaughtered now. Okay, yeah, you fired. You've done enough damage here, McCleary. Okay, but in all serious, you had... Um, Speaking of damage, you had, uh, like, was that, 13, 15 points? You were on the gray row, and you yep. rolled a natural two, subtracting, it doesn't matter, you did seven casualty points. So, that's going to be one, two, three, four, you know, I'm just going to kill this whole squad with the Titan 92, because I can't use them at an assault. There goes five, and knock him down to a half squad. Damn, Sir Akao, you just got lit up, dude. <laughs> He's like, I had a platoon a second ago. I don't know where they all went. Now I'm down to just literally a squad. Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. My little pathetic reinforcement convoy. One, two, Three, four. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our assaults. So this assault's pretty much already done. Now here comes the bad news. I'm going to go ahead and try to launch my assault. I have a grand total of five points. You have one, four, eleven versus my four. That's one to three. Uh, I'm going to throw in three grenades. Come on, Mr. Shindo. This is a desperate assault, man. I, I feel very Japanese right now. Close assault odds table. I'm on the one to three. I have to roll a four or less. However, I get to subtract one from my leader. You get to add one for your leader, so that come out, comes out to a wash. I'm throwing in three grenades. I get to add, I get to now roll a seven or less. Unless you're throwing in any of your grenades as well. Uh, I'll throw in, let's throw in one grenade. Okay, now I have to roll a six or less. Yeah, obviously we're really heavily invested in this thing here. So six or less. 2d6 drum roll please it's for the emperor boys Bonsai! a six exactly Enough! however i think i wiped myself out on that because i have to pay one casualty point per infantry unit in the hex first of all the australians wiped out <laughs> successful assaults are nasty however you did have one, two, three, four infantry units in the hex, in woods, that's six, four plus two is six, plus foxholes is seven. That cost me seven casualty points. I literally only have seven casualty points in there. They're wiped out. I'm gonna spend my last casualty point. He is now pinned down. I'm gonna continue the assault with these guys pretty much. They move in. Stack is legal. There's a total of four infantry units in the hex. They're pinned down here. Grenades used up. Grenades all used up. And that is a bloodbath of an assault. The Australian right wing has fallen. That's pretty cool. He's the Japanese player. Let's see if the other assaults do as well. Next we have... Uh, let's, let's go up here. Oh, God. Um, I'm pretty sure these are going to fail. 1, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13 against my 5. Again, that's 1 to 3 odds. Oh my god. I don't have that many grenades left. I do own the objective packs forever, but I'm pretty sure you're going to take it back. You know what? I'm going to resolve this one down here first. I have 11 points versus your 15. 11 to your 15, that's 1 to 2. Okay, I'll invest my grenades here. So I only have so many. One to two odds, our leaders cancel each other out. One to two odds is um, five or less. 
My three grenades makes it an eight or less, unless you throw in some more grenades. Uh, I'm going to throw in all three grenades. Oh no! Make this hard for you. Oh, it's uh, that's pretty much what's going to save your wing down there. All right, so he now has no grenades left. <laughs> I cannot throw in more because I only have three infantry units in that axe. So we're back down to one to two odds. Let's add four to die roll, subtract four from the die roll. So no modifiers. One to two odds, I have to roll a five or less. If I make this roll, I apologize in advance. Except not really. The odds are against it. I think I have like a 30% chance. Here I go, five or less. Oh, it did not work, Mr. Emperor. All right, I definitely got slaughtered on that one. Okay, so I take one casualty point per infantry unit you had on the hex. The terrain cost of the hex I was assaulting into plus the amount by which I missed the roll. So, I, I needed a 5, I rolled a 10, I take 5 casualty points for um, missing the roll. You have 1, 2, 3, 4 infantry units, because the officer does count. That's 4, and you're in woods. That's 2. Are there foxholes in that hex? No, I don't think so. I think that's just a wood six. Okay, cool. So that's the total butcher's bill there. That's a total of nine, 11, 11 casualty points. I can't remember the last time I took 11 casualty points. Full squad. Full squad. And uh, the leader is now pinned. <laughs> you basically just machine gunned that whole group like to death. Wasn't there one guy um, in the actual Kokoda Trail? With an Owen gun, not an Owen gun, with a Bren gun, he took out like 15 Japanese in one spray. He got the Victoria Cross. Yeah, that's, that's the story, yeah. He uh, I th I, unloaded. I, I literally think that just happened. Um, so, two full squads is eight men. Yeah, that's uh, 16 men just went down. Either killed or uh, combat ineffective. Although he didn't do it himself. He had plenty of help. There were 16, um, 20... 21 Australians in that hex, so it wasn't one guy. But that attack is well and truly broken up. Where did this Type 96 come from? Oh, it was under here. Capture Japanese machine guns, put to good use against their former owners. Yes, I've won in the uh, east, but I am losing hard in the west. Not only was my assault literally slaughtered in place, but now he's got Valor's uh, units up here. I see a counterattack coming out of the west in my near future. All right, let's wrap things up here with this assault, which I'm not allowed to combine because they're in two different hexes. They couldn't reach and get into the same hex. All right, he's out of grenades, folks. I'm going to use my last two grenades. Clunk. Do it. My last two grenades, Surakawa, it's all down, or Zurizawa, it's all down to you. I have, oh God, five points versus your 13. Oh, that's right, uh, 1 to 3, because 5 to 13, you round in favor of the defender. Subtract 3, you're subtracting 2. So, net subtract 1, I have to roll a 5 or less. But maybe I can grind them down. Maybe Tomata can carry it on in, if I fail this assault, which I probably will. 5 or less. Another bet. My dice have deserted me! Alright, so I whiffed it by 4... There are foxholes in that hex. There is four infantry units in the hex. And two for the woods. So, margin, infantry squads, woods, foxholes. Eleven more casualty points. There's only seven in the hex. And that, my friends, is how you lose a Valorant victory game in one turn. Now, there were three infantry units. You have to take three casualty points. In McGree's platoon. Yep. Uh, I'll drop the full squad down to a half squad. I think that'll do it. Yep. Yeah, he doesn't want to pin anybody down here now, guys, because he's getting assaulted, like, literally right now. All right, cool. Uh, I already declared the assaults going in. I now have no grenades left. Oh, man. Well, where's a Japanese sniper when you need one? Oh, jeez. And he's got negative two. <laughs> hey, I won some of the battle, at least, damn it. All right, so that is going to be 3, 9, 11 points versus my 5. That's technically 1 to 3 odds. No bonuses. I need a 4 or less. What am I doing? Um, I Damn, I came close. No! 1. Sorry, I lost it by 1. 2 for the 
Woods, four infantry units. Now I'm already out of casualty points. And that concludes, believe it or not, finally, uh, the bloodiest Japanese turn in uh, the history of Valor and Victory, perhaps. Um, I do now own three uh, objective hexes. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold them. Uh, so I'm winning on objectives, believe it or not. However, I think I lost too much. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold a whole heck of a lot. But I have done some damage uh, to the... Ooh. When this assault failed down here, we did assess uh, some casualties. So we'll come back to that in just a second. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and cut this recording for now. And we'll be back shortly to see uh, what happens when I finish losing this game. Okay, here we are at the beginning of Australian Turn 3. We're in uh, Australian Command Phase. Dylan is using up his third and last off-board light mortar mission. He has hit my mountain gun. He's tired of my mountain gun, in his words, deleting stuff. <laughs> so far, that mountain gun's been pretty valuable. And um, I think it might be smoked now, so we'll see what happens. So he's on the yellow barrage table, obviously. He rolls a natural six, which becomes an eight because of my woods. I get to add two, 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 two to his die roll. So we wind up with uh, an eight, which equates to three cash limits. He has a gun shield. I don't think the gun shield applies against overhead mortar strikes. So we're going to disregard the uh, gun shield. That means he gets pinned down. Uh, that uses the one casualty point. Even if I pin down Oshima as well, which I don't think I want to do, um, but even if I did want to do that, that would leave me with one casualty point to assess. Again, I have to assess a total of three. Any way you cut it, this gun has to make a survival check. He's got three uh, casualty points. That's the three down there in the corner, which means Dylan has to roll over a three on a single D6. It's literally a four up. It's 50-50. So go ahead and roll a single um, D6 stone and see if you can get a four or better. Uh, two. Oh no, the gun is only pinned down. So I will just put that fire marker on top of him to show that he is. Um, well, you know what? I'll just turn him the other way. He's now pointing the wrong way. He's not pointing the wrong way. We're just doing that to show that he's pinned. Because I don't have a pinned marker right now. All right, cool. He's in there with a negative two officer, so I'm pretty sure he'll rally pretty quick. And that's it for Dylan's uh, off-board missions. So despite the catastrophe I've taken in the center, and the western sides of the table, I might be able to uh, squeak out some kind of ugly draw here. We'll see how it goes. So stay tuned, and we'll see what happens. Okay, guys, the end of Australian Turn 3, where things are not looking good for the Japanese. First of all, the company command group here under uh, Captain uh, McCree has charged up the hill. I did take opportunity fire, which was probably ill-advised, Mr. Shindo. Took a shot here at uh, McCleary's platoon as they moved from P-10 to Q-10. Uh, I did score a couple casualty points. However, he's got some Valorous units in there. Valorous units absorb or can ignore the first casualty point in a stack. So even though I did two casualty points against them, he's got two Valorous units in there. He can just say, ignore the first, ignore the first. And long story short, he just did the, uh, the whole Lieutenant Spears run through uh, Foy. And I basically did no damage. So once these guys had fired, that kind of cleared the way for McCree to kind of shimmy up the hill here. He's going to launch a dual assault. I thought I had a line of sight on there with my knee mortars, but I don't. They're blocked by trees. I took some long range rifle fire, did no damage. So long story short, I think I'm in trouble now. He did do some direct fire point blank into November 11, killed the uh, two half squads that were clinging to life in there and pinned down Sarazawa, which uh, since he started off adjacent, that's not good for me because now he gets to assault as well and he's pinned down. So long story short, we're now in the Australian advance and assault phase. Which assault do you want to do first? It looks like you've got three of them on the go here. Let's, uh, let's work from the bottom up. So. Okay. So how many guys are you committing to this assault? Uh, let's throw everybody. Okay, cool. And the only reason I ask that is, again, we know it's automatic, but anyone who's in the assault has to occupy the assault in X. Yep. So... Cool. I just want to see how many guys my uh, mountain gun is going to shoot at next time. <laughs> I'm putting a lot of faith in that mountain gun. It's the only thing I've got left. <laughs> um, okay, so that's automatic uh, for people watching the video. Automatic uh, win on an assault with no casualty points assessed regardless of terrain if everyone in the unit is pinned. Any pinned units are just immediately removed. And there was only pinned units in there. Speaking of which, we then come up here to Captain McCree 
who has a whole bunch of Australian uh, rifles in there with him. I think you, get, you said you're going to divide this assault? Yes. Um, so the half squad that's not carrying a support weapon will um, accept the surrender of, of those gentlemen there. He pretty much walks in here. We all shoot ourselves in the face with our rifles. Uh, you capture a Hotchkiss machine gun. If we were playing advanced squad leader, you would now get to use that Hotchkiss machine gun. Uh, but again, Battle and Victory doesn't keep track of that. So that assault is again automatic. This assault, not so much. This one's going to cost you, even if you win. I did already fire, so I don't get to do any opportunity to fire. Um, so here we go. I have a grand total of six points in there. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's one to one. You subtract one from your roll because I have a negative one liter, you have a negative two liter. So basically you win by one. Uh, no one has any grenades left. We have already shot our wad as far as that goes. So let me find my chart here. One to one, subtract one from the die roll. You need to roll a seven or less on 2d6. It's even money, folks. Here we go. Seven or less. A seven. He got it exactly. Mm. Right, I was so worried was, about that. Very worried. It's, it's going to cost you one, two, three, four casual, uh, four infantry units in the stack. They're eliminated, by the way. Um, two for trees, one for the foxholes. So it's a grand total of seven casualty points that cost you. Pretty Wait sure minute. that's going to wipe me out. One, two, three, four. And even if you pin him down, yeah, that's uh, that's that unit wiped out. We wipe each other out. There. Yep. How's that for the Pacific? Dude, wh what happened to our forces? We used to have armies on this <laughs> table. All right, guys. Um, I think that wraps up the advance and assault phase. Oh, unless these guys, do these guys want to move or do your pop ones want to move? You get to move uh, the one, uh, one hex in the yes, advanced assault phase. Uh, the Papuans all move back into the foxholes. Um, they were just out there for bravado. Okay. They basically did the uh, the whole Billy thing on the edge of the bridge and uh, at the end of Predator. Uh, okay, I'm done. I'm running back in the foxholes. <laughs> I can recover. <laughs> they rushed out here and they saw this Japanese crew turning this uh, mountain gun back around. And they're like, okay. <laughs> We'll go ahead and take over again. Um, okay, and then uh, how about McCleary's uh, heroes down here? They're going to move up that road into R8. Cool. So they'll uh, jump in the foxholes there. McCleary, it looks like you're in command now. So uh, again, for people who are watching the video later, not everybody in that stack is dead, but those, those squads are combat ineffective. All right, and that wraps up turn three. Guys, uh, we're down to like a couple puddles of troops left. He outnumbers me. I still own three, because he never moved through P7. I still technically own three out of four, three out of five objective hexes. And um, I've got a little bit of artillery on the table that's about to rally. In fact, as Japanese turn four begins, this gun now rallies. He's going to take some direct fire. So stay to this game is uh, not quite over yet. Um, the Kokoda Trail is a bloodbath, if nothing else. This game so far has uh, not been a disappointment. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll finish up this game and get back to you, let you know what's going on. Okay, guys, the beginning of Australian Turn 4, Japanese Turn 4, was pretty uneventful. Um, however, things just got pretty nasty. Uh, as McCleary's group dropped the Vigorous Machine Gun, it looks like he's setting up some kind of an assault here. And as he moved here into P6, um, he did take some fire from my mountain gun. Uh, my mountain gun, which has a negative two liter on there. So on board, artillery can make opportunity fire. Mortars can't. That's a direct fire weapon. So he can take opportunity fire. Um, actually, you know what? Technically, he's in a stream. Stream is not clear terrain. Then again, you're also on a bridge. Uh, but let's uh, let's uh, four up it. Four up in your favor. Two. Okay. Um. Sorry. Whether or not that was open terrain or not. Um. If you're in the brook and you get like a negative one, but you're on, you're also on a bridge. So anyway, that's t a total of. I rolled a natural uh, six which became a three. Negative one for opportunity fire in the open. Negative two for my leader becomes a total of three. Minus my six becomes a three. 
Uh, that is six casualty points on the gray row. He gets to absorb the first two because of his Valorous units. That means he still has to sustain four casualty points. I'll, uh, I'll have to remove the two half squads. Oh, no. Boom. That was some pretty ferocious opportunity fire. Okay, uh, that was two movement points so far. Uh, continue the rest of your movement. Okay, they're going to go into Q7. All right, so back up the stream here. Yep. Okay. And then finish in R6, but there'll be some opportunity fire, I think. Romeo 6, like back here? Yep. Okay, um, is there a reason they didn't just go 1, 2... I had to tag the objective. It, it, it had been oh, taken. okay. Yeah. Oh, I see what he's doing. All right, cool. He'll take a shot while you're in Q7. Now, Q7 is definitely a stream hex, which technically does count as negative one cover. So I will not get the negative one. In fact, you'll get oh, a positive I, one. I see. Sorry, sorry, Jim. Sorry, I, can I... Uh, uh, yep. I uh, sorry, I'll, I'll move into P7 and then back into those foxholes. Um, sorry. I, I don't know what I was... I, I forgot that I'd lost units. I'm like, oh, this is my plan. But, oh, Okay. So they basically I, run out, they stick a flag in the ground, and they rush back? Yeah. yeah. Alright, cool. I thought maybe he was assaulting here, but the... Uh, the uh, yeah, that was the plan, but the mountain gun just... The mountain gun yep. sort of screwed that up. Right. Okay, no worries. Um, any other movement? Yep, the unit in uh, N11. Yep. We'll move into N10. And then M10. Okay, point blank, opportunity fire. Um, four points, I get to subtract two from the die roll. Uh, I get to subtract two, becomes four on four points. Three casualty points. Okay, I will knock that full squad down to a half squad. Yeah. Alright. Actually, that's full squad was... Oh, it was power puns. Okay, cool, I had it right. That's two. And then I'll, uh, I'll pin that half squad that got knocked down. Okay, so we knocked down half a squad and pinned down the rest. Or pinned down the rest of that half squad. So that's that results. I sense an incoming assault soon. The uh, Nobody else can really do much about it. Okay, um, any other movement uh, from your side? I think you've got uh, the no, I'm, last oh, guy. Oh, actually, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he'll move into Q10. Into Q10, got it. And then into uh, R9. One, two, three. He kind of has to stop there because he doesn't have a leader. Um, he can get into those foxholes during the advance and assault phase. Okay, so that uh, wraps up movement and opportunity fire. I don't really have any defensive fire because everything else is blocked by terrain or I've already fired it. We go straight to your assaults, which I guess you're going to do here against these guys. Yep, that'll be an assault. Okay, so we have 11 total points versus my four. That is two to one. You get to subtract one from the die roll because of your commander. I have no commander. Two to one. You have to roll a nine or less. Two to six. Ooh. I got a seven. All right, so that's a successful assault. These guys are wiped out. Two infantry units plus the woods, four casualty points assessed against you. I'll uh, pin everybody and drop the full squad down to a half squad. He is pinned along with his captured type 96. All right, at the end of your um, at the end of your turn, you uh, try to. Um, well, do you have do you have any other advanced assault? Does this R9 move into the fox uh, Yeah, he'll he'll move up to McCleary. Okay, and, uh, that's everything. All right, so now uh, try to rally this guy on a six or less. Cool. Two d six. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's happy where he is. Oh, okay. And this guy here, does he try a rally? Now he gets a seven and less because he has a negative one officer stacked with him. Uh, a six, so he's right. good. He does rally with his Type ninety six. Japanese machine gun. I know everyone who's watching this channel later. The Australians do have some captured Japanese support weapons. All right, so that will wrap up turn four, I believe, because Japanese clearly have already gone. All right, guys, we're coming near the end of it here. We've kind of lost the ability to hurt each other. <laughs> I think we're going to... Uh, we'll definitely continue turns five and six, but we'll be back probably one more time, uh, unless something really cool and interesting happens, to wrap up the rest of this game. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see how this game turns out.